Welcome back to the channel and thanks to all the new subscribers who have um, subscribed to me because of the video I made about um, EV chargers in Aldi. That video did quite well as in it got quite a lot of views for a short video that I made very quickly one evening um, at a local supermarket. And um, I think it, it touched a nerve because a lot of people basically said, oh, EVs are rubbish because of this one issue with them, which it isn't really an issue with the EV per se at all. It's actually the issue with the car park management. That's like saying that um, going to play bingo is really rubbish because, um, you know, they've got um, constrictive terms on the parking at the bingo hall. Um, it doesn't make bingo rubbish. It just makes the parking company rubbish. EVs are very good in that you have a choice of places to recharge them. You can recharge them at home, you can recharge them at work, you can recharge them at service stations, at supermarkets, and frankly pretty much anywhere because almost everywhere has electricity. Whether or not you can actually plug into it is another matter, but it seems like a, a silly argument against EVs to say, oh, well, it's rubbish because some people have got fined for parking to charge them. As an update on that, I have been around there yesterday and there's, been, there's absolutely no change to the parking situation at all. The subject of this video is why electric cars are too good. So that's the subject of this video, that's the title of this video, why EVs are too good and why that's a problem. And um, I want to go back, take you back 10 to 12 years ago when the first EVs came out that were, you know, that you could go into a normal car dealership and buy. We're talking about the Nissan Leaf and the Renault Zoe. I want to think about the Leaf because it sold very well and because it's um, a mass market brand and it was a, certainly a mass market car. It, was, it did everything um, very well. It's a nice car to drive. It was uh, fast, etc., etc. It had lots of space, it's practical. And it was affordable, so um, I think people could really understand that car um, back then because um, it did everything very well apart from one thing, and that was range. So, so long as you were um, prepared to only be able to drive, you know, 80 miles in winter, 100 miles in summer when it was brand new, then it made total sense. It was obviously a lot cheaper to run because it um, ran on off-peak electricity, silent and, um, you know, had all the sort of things that we associate with, with electric cars. Um, but people could understand that in their mind that, yes, whilst it was cheaper to run um, and it was, it was quieter and all of that, uh, it didn't go very far. So, you know, people have had Leafs now for many years you know um, I've got a friend who's got one that's 10 years old still uses it as his daily car um, it's never really gone wrong uh, well it's never actually gone wrong um, but you know it's limited in range and, and people could understand that because in life generally there are compromises you know you you want to have a, a nice meal you go to a nice restaurant and you pay through the nose for it you want a cheap meal you go to a cheap restaurant and the food's normally not very nice but it is cheap and that's generally how life works, that um, you can have something that's uh, good, but you um, will have to make compromises for it. And um, the problem with EVs is that now um, they're not like that. So, and it's contrary to what people seem to understand. So almost everyone will know someone now who's had a first generation or second generation electric car. You know, I'm talking about those Leafs with small batteries that did 100 miles at best and took hours to recharge afterwards. Now, I know, you know, you could do rapid charging and stuff, but reality was 10 years ago, there were very few charges. If you did find a rapid charger, you might have to queue for it because there was only one. And, um, you know, it was impractical in winter going long distances. You you, you know, you, whilst you, you probably could do it, it was definitely a lot worse than driving a combustion car. So people have that in their mind and they understand that. They understand that for some people, well, 10 years ago, an electric car made sense because it was cheaper to run. They only ran around town or, you know, took the kids to school or whatever. And they could understand the trade-off because everything in life has trade-offs, right? But the problem is that electric cars now don't have any trade-offs. They're better in every single way, apart from some contrived, imagined scenario where they're worse. 
in the real world, for most people, as I say, for 90, 95% of people in a country where there's decent electric vehicle charging infrastructure, an electric car is better in every single way. And even if you can't charge at home, and even if you, you know, you, you drive a lot in winter, or you do long distances, or you do all of those things that are kind of generally considered a bad thing to do with an electric car, a modern electric car is better still. Yes, you can contrive a situation where it's worse. You know, you could have no um, no charging at your house, no charging where, when you're parked up in your, in your normal car park. You could be surrounded only by the most expensive rapid chargers. They might not be one for miles away. And you tow a horse box uphill in winter for 300 miles every day. In which case, you know, an electric car isn't for you, but for the vast majority of drivers, I'm talking, as I say, 90-95% of drivers, an electric car is better in every single way. And that's a problem, because people can't comprehend that it could be that much better. At the moment, people are now, I can hear them, they're typing, they're saying, Peter, you're lying, you're being paid to say all of this, which I really am not. I, I make my living through mending combustion cars, so... I actually don't really want people to buy electric cars because they're much, they require much less maintenance, and that's my living. So I'm not being paid to say this. I'm just just saying this because they, I'm being paid for you watching the video. You know, for, for, for most people, it's better. Um, it, the car is quieter. It's faster. It's more convenient. It's cheaper. It's cheaper to buy. Um, it goes wrong less. Um, it you know you can preheat it from your phone. You can uh, do all sorts of things um, and be given all sorts of opportunities that you just don't have in a combustion car. You don't have to check the oil and refill it with Ad Blue and uh, do all of those horrible things that you do with most combustion cars. But people can't get their head around it. If you give them one advantage that they care about, that is enough for most people. So now if I'm talking to people about electric cars, I just give them one advantage. I say an electric car is much better because you don't have to check the oil. Or because, you know, if it's a Tesla, for example, there's no scheduled servicing. So I'll say, well, get a Tesla because you never have to go to the garage. And that, for most people, is enough of a reason. It's only later when they get the car that then they come back to me and they now say... Well, it's amazing. It costs much less to run, and it's much more convenient, and it's much nicer to drive, and I'm more relaxed, and all of those things. But as I say, it seems too good to be true. People are naturally suspicious. If I came to the average person on the street and say, look, I've got a really good job for you, um, you know, it pays ten times um, what you earn now, you have to do half the work, um, you can work for as long as you like you, and you get a, a, an amazing pension and final salary sac um, when you leave. And, uh, you know, you can work from home. It's going, you're going to think it's a scam. And, it, you know, it always is. It's always a MLM scheme or something like that. But with electric cars, there is no ne downside for most people. It's better in every way. And people think it's a scam because it's so good. And I, I really think that's the, the the big stumbling block now to electric car adoption is people think it's a scam. They then go out and look. Well, it can't be this good. It can't be quite as good as people are making out it is. It just can't be. It's just not right. It's not normal. So then they go out and they look for, for contrived problems, which, of course, from time to time do happen. From time to time, people's cars do need a new battery. From time to time, people do have to queue for charging from time to time. It might work out more expensive than a diesel car. But for the vast majority of electric car owners, the vast majority of non-electric car owners who will shortly become electric car owners or drivers, electric car is better in every single way. And that just doesn't sit with the psyche of the average person. It doesn't seem right. It seems suspiciously good. And I'm here to tell you that, unfortunately, it's the truth. The car is just better in every single way. Unless, of course, you're 
towing uphill in the dark in winter for 500 miles and you don't have to stop. All of that sort of stuff that's never going to happen. So the takeaway from this video is if you just look at any one metric, an electric car is generally, for most people, better. And I can hear you typing. I can hear you saying, ah, yes, but you don't understand, Peter. I can't park at home and the battery's going to need replacing every five years and... Oh, is it 10 years now or is it 15 years? Anyway, and, you know, my friend uh, bought one and it burnt down twice and all of that kind of stuff. Yes, things do go wrong, but an isolated case doesn't make the norm. If we were looking at the norm for combustion cars, that would be new engines very regularly, um, DPFs, AGRs, turbos, injectors, fuel pumps that do go wrong all the time on top of your normal, very expensive, time-consuming polluting maintenance that you require so don't get me wrong there are situations where f f for now um, a combustion car is still superior if you're writing that in the comment i fully agree with you that you know that you live on a, on in a flat and there's no park no parking uh, with chargers and blah, blah 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 yeah well stick with your combustion car for now the solutions are coming in fact they are actually here for most people um, but for most people, an electric car is better and it's not a scam. But don't worry about that. Just think about one advantage and that will be enough of a reason for you to go to an electric car. For me, it's having a completely linear torque delivery. That is the reason that I prefer driving an electric car over any of the other reasons. It's not that you don't have to change gear, it's that you don't have a gearbox, and that is reason enough for me. But, don't take my word for it, maybe talk to someone who actually has an electric car, and who doesn't know someone who knows someone who knows someone who has an electric car that broke down. Get them to go out, go out in it, maybe take one for a test drive, look at one factor, and then... Trust me on this, you'll enjoy it, and then you'll realise that actually everything else is better as well. So, that's the big problem with electric cars. Tune in next time, and uh, thanks for watching.